welcome to my YouTube channel. It's the beginning of May on my allotment and it's a really exciting time. Lots of things are happening. I'm going to be showing you around my allotment what I'm doing and in particular I'm going to be doing some seeds sown direct into the soil and giving you some top tips for successful sowing. So if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel already, it'd be really, really helpful if you did because you'll get lots and lots of updates all throughout the season to get keep you on track with your gardening. So one top tip is bring water and hot refreshments because it is quite warm up here and quite often you'll get up here and the first thing you'll want is a drink because it's actually quite warm today. So I've got some lovely herbal tea and some water for when I feel that I need to have a sip. So if we get started, as you can see, the, allot the rhubarb is doing absolutely fantastically. So I will no doubt be pulling some of that this week to have in my breakfast or to make some crumble with the fruit trees are looking absolutely fantastic lots of lovely bloom on them so I need to do a little bit of weeding in between that and I'll be putting some bark down just to just to keep the um the weeds at bay I'm trying something new with my gooseberry bristles this year we get lots and lots of grass and weeds going through so we're trying like the no dig method so we've put some paper sacks down some are chicken feed some are potato sacks and then we're covering them with mulch we're really lucky that we don't have to buy bark and things like that at our allotment we do get it delivered so I will just be putting that in and around to see what difference it makes I mean one thing for sure is it will hold the water in and hopefully I won't be weeding it as much this year as I can be some years so I'll finish that off later as we move down this section's still covered I'm going to be putting brassicas in this but I've got weed suppressant down I will be putting them out really, really soon, just not this week, that's all. I'm going to be getting them used to the outside weather because in Kent, we really are starting to get less frost now. So I will be able to put out some of my brassicas, so that's really brilliant. As I move down, we've got more space here where we've got my onions in, my broad beans and my garlic. My onions have just started to sprout. Um, I've had a few that have been picked out by helpful birds so it's really good to kind of like look around and if any of them have popped out just poke them back in again which is what I did this morning because a couple have been have been nipped out by birds so you don't want to you don't want to waste any so the garlic's looking really really good so that still needs a little bit longer I've heard some people digging it already and wondering why they haven't got any garlic because it's too soon you need to give it at least another month at least at least into June so, and I'll be giving you, I'll be, when I dig it, you'll know, and that'll probably be a good time for you to dig yours. As we move over, I've just put in some dahlias. So we grew dahlias last year, and they grew really, really successful. The reason we chose dahlias is because they flower all summer, and they produce the most beautiful flowers to use in your, in your house or to give away as gifts. So we did a mixture of both. So that was a really, really um, good, good flower to use. So the potatoes are in, my first earlies and my second earlies. As yet, mine aren't sprouting, but we had a lot of rain in the middle of this week, so I anticipate there to be sprouting happening soon. I'm sure it's happening underground. We've just got to wait for it to show on the top. So we come over to the seeds. Now, I've already sown a few here, but I'm going to show you how I do it. But roughly, I dug this about a week ago. I knew it was going to rain, and then I re-dug it today and raked it over to smooth it off. I then use something to, to create a straight line with. Um, I've got these old um, decking boards, but you could, if you, all you had was two sticks and a piece of string, you could just do that. So I basically dug it over, raked it over, and then create small, shallow, lines in it with with a trowel or you could use a dibber just like that really really simple you've dug it over so it's nice and soft really really easy to do a little shallow trough just to drop the seeds into so the seeds i've planted today are parsnip beetroot and carrots i'm also going to be planting some radishes and some lettuces now when i do my trowels uh, i you know, trowel a line down for the seeds to go in. Something that I find that really, really helps with germination if, is if you water it first before you put the seeds in. So I did that with all these rows first. So without the rows on, you gently water before you put the seeds in. 
Now I've done this for many years and it works really, really well for me. So the seeds obviously land in something moist, which is gonna help germination. So I've got my radish seed out of the packet and you just thinly sprinkle it along the row. I'm only gonna do half a row because I'm gonna do the other row with some mixed lettuces. You can sow a little row of lettuces direct into the soil. The lettuces I'm gonna be sowing will be a cut and come again one. So you, you can keep them quite close together, but these are mixed radishes. So different colors, all different sorts, because it's nice to have a variety. I'm only gonna do half the row and I'm gonna mark where the half row is so that I know with a little peg. So I've got like a little temp peg just as a little marker so I know where I've got to. So I've got a mixture of salad leaves. These are cut and come again varieties, which are particularly helpful because it means you don't have to keep sowing quite so much. So I've all, although I've got some lettuces started off at home that are much further on, which I will be planting out, these will come on later. So if you just gently sprinkle them into the row, and like I say, I shall sow part of the row green lettuce and part red lettuce because it's nice to have a variety. So one of the great things about growing your own allotment is you can have a much better variety than you get in the shops. So, so that's the green ones in. Let me get some red ones out. So the green ones are called salad bowl and the red ones are called Lola Rosso. So again, varieties that I've grown year after year after year. I actually find that the slugs aren't quite so attracted to the curly leaf variety lettuces. So I don't know whether other gardeners have, have had the same experience as me, but that's my personal experience. I've no idea whether there's any science behind that, but it's something that, um, that I've just generally found. So less need for any kind of pest control. So there we go. So that's the lettuce seeds in, and now I'm going to show you how to cover them up. So that's my seeds in, and I'm going to put a link in the description so you can purchase some of the seeds if you're not able to find them yourself. So my top tip with covering your seeds is I use a little bit of multi-purpose. The reason I do that is because my say soil is quite clayey. Now, if you've got very, very fine soil, then maybe you don't need to. But despite me digging in a lot of organic matter, I still find it quite hard for any seeds to germinate. So I then just gently sprinkle. And remember what I said when you sow, sow other seeds? These are very tiny seeds. You really only just cover it with compost. So you're not putting loads and loads on. You know, it's not necessary to cover it with loads and loads of, um, of soil. So just a few handfuls will cover that. Obviously, don't forget to mark all your different rows. You can see I've put my seed packets on there because they're actually empty now, so there's no need for them. You couldn't do that if you do used half the packet. You'd have to get separate tags because then obviously you wouldn't know what the seeds were with the ones that were left. Seems obvious, but I've done it and then realised I didn't have the packet and I didn't know what they were. So there we go. That's my seeds covered, a little bit thin there, so a little bit more. So then you water them. That's really, really important when you water your seeds that you have a rose on it, because if you watered it uncovered, they would all just splay everywhere and that wouldn't be any good. So if you move this out of the way, you don't want to leave it there because it would encourage slugs. So you just water over the seeds, give them a good water. And you would do this every few days to help them germinate. So something I do, I won't be doing it now because they won't, it will take a few days for them to germinate, but I will be covering all these seeds with a little bit of netting because once they sprout, they will be great fodder for the birds and you will just lose so many. So I temporarily net them. Something else I do in a couple of days is I've got like a little flower shaker or you could use a pepper shaker and I put hot chilli pepper in it and I shake that in and around because it stops a multitude of pests attacking your young seedlings. So that's a really natural way. If you choose to put slug pellets down, there's lots of different ones on the market, like organic, non-organic. Don't put lots down and don't put them right on top of the seeds. If you're gonna do it, put them away from it because you don't wanna be putting something that toxic that close to your plants. And if you do put them down, you really don't need that much. It's all down to personal choice. I'm not gonna tell you what to do. You have to do what's right for you. 
I also will be putting Enviromesh over my carrot seeds because as they grow, the risk of carrot fly is, is pretty strong. And I always cover my carrots with, with Enviromesh because it stops most of the carrot fly throughout the year. So I really, really hope those tips have been helpful for successful sowing of your lovely seeds. And if you need any help, put some comments and I'll do the best I can to reply. As we move up the allotment, you can see I've dug, dug a little bit more over. So I'll be planting some more bits in there soon. I've still got some chard and some spring onions and a few leeks. They're only going to be there probably a, a matter of weeks and I'll be digging those up. And the squashes will be going in there soon as well. You know, it really, really is warming up. So I will start to put them out but I won't put them all out in one go because you know if we if we got a harsh night I'd lose them all in one go so what I normally do is I put a few out you know a week at a time and gradually build up and always have some spares because the slug will get a few I'm afraid it's just the way it is so the more you have and um, the length you know you've got some to replace it with so we're going to do the same thing with the black currants that we're doing with the gooseberries so we're going to put some paper sacks around and we're going to cover it in bark so you'll be able to see on the next video how that's all coming on and to see whether it is actually doing what we want it to do to keep the weeds down. So like I said, a little bit of tidying up needs to be done in the fruit cage, which we will get on and do that during the course of this month. And as we move up, you can see that the artichokes are really starting to, to get really quite big now. I think they're probably, well, more than doubled in size and a little bit of weeding needs to be done around there as well. I think that's another thing to bear in mind. This time of year, the weeds are growing probably quicker than the plants are. So just keep that in check and do a little bit of weeding every time you're up here. So I really hope that there's been some useful tips in there and I really hope that it's going to help you sow successfully as well.